So, you want to know if you should buy Battlefield 5 or not? So, the quick answer is... It depends. So, there you have it, your answer. So now you don't have to watch some random dude suspiciously exactly a 10 minute long video reviewing Battlefield 5. Oh, you, you actually want to know why it depends or on what it depends. Okay, good thing I have prepared this suspiciously exactly 10 minute long video reviewing Battlefield. Wait a minute. Game review. So, why should you buy Battlefield 5? First and foremost, the graphics. This game is hands down one of the most beautiful games I have ever played, especially on ultra settings and even on some lower settings as well. From water to land to sky to buildings to planes, tanks, guns, plants, dirt, fire, explosions and even the terrain reflection in your soldier's eyeballs. Yes, they're fucking eyeballs. It all looks absolutely gorgeous. That even your soldier's in-game shit looks better than the average graphics of other 2018 game titles. Yeah, we fucking get it now. So, next up, Battlefield 5 is settled in the World War II era. So, it has a whole lot of potential of becoming the best World War II game ever made. What I mean by that is that World War II had some massive, hectic and immersive battles that would be perfect for a game like Battlefield. So it would be absolutely awesome if DICE decides to introduce multiplayer content like storming the beaches of Normandy while Operation Overlord is going on, fighting in the Battle of Stalingrad or the Battle of Kursk, aka the biggest tank battle in history, or jumping in a bunch of American planes and trying to sink the legendary Yamato. Which brings me to my second point which is adding more factions. So currently the game only has two factions which are the British and the Germans. Do you honestly think you're fucking funny? Seriously. So I'm sure that adding additional factions that played a big role in the outcome of the war, like the United States, the Soviet Union and Imperial Japan, would be very much appreciated. Since how cool would it be to drive not only Churchills and Tigers, but also the legendary American M4 Sherman or the Soviet T-34 tank? But I'll just leave this pro for how it is right now and I'll be coming right back to it when I start to cover the cons of this game. But for now, let's just move on to the third pro, which is the fact that this game is so much fun to play. Since the gunfights are smooth and vibrant <coughs> before dice completely fucked up the TTK. The maps are beautiful. Yeah, you already told us that. And there's overall zero to very little RNG in aiming and shooting. All in all, your typical Battlefield game. Also, the game rewards overall skill and team play a lot, since the amount of score you get for performing squad-related actions is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Which is a good thing in my opinion, since Battlefield remains that type of game where team play really makes or breaks a round. And I think DICE did an amazing job at promoting team play, with implementing the squad system. Which creates such sympathy between random players meeting in an in-game lobby like I've never seen before in any other shooter. So now let's talk about, in my opinion, one of the most relieving things about Battlefield 5, and that is the absence of pay to win. And as a guy that has been playing Roll of Tanks for 5 years straight right now, this was such a culture shock for me, since DICE literally disabled the option to spend real money in game for now. So currently, the only way to get the better guns and equipment in Battlefield 5 is to simply progress, level up, and play the game a lot. And also, on top of that, DICE has stated that every future DLC update for Battlefield 5 will be completely completely free of charge so that every player will be treated equally. And yeah, that would be very cool if the DLC content isn't just the missing bit of the full game. Since apparently, in DICE's eyes, DLC content is simply cutting off 20% of your finished game, splitting it up in a few different segments and releasing it later on. Game review. <coughs> So, why should you not buy Battlefield 5? You should definitely not buy Battlefield 5 if you don't want to pay full price for only 80% of the finished game while getting the remaining 20% later on. Because that's just fucking retarded in my opinion. It's like you buy a house but you can't access your garage yet since that part of the house will only be accessible in two months. That's just weird, isn't it? 
But you know what's also weird? The fact that DICE tried to make a World War II game without including one of the most famous World War II battles despite the fans bagging for it. And instead of listening to their fan base and giving us those epic iconic World War II battles in gorgeous modern day graphics, DICE simply said, fuck you all, we're gonna shove our stupid made up World War II Rebellion Nobody's Club idea down your fucking throat and if you don't like it then simply don't buy our game you bunch of uneducated f Okay, let's just not start about that dilemma again since I want to keep this review centered around the game itself and not around the uneducated fucks who completely blew the game's marketing. But with all jokes aside, in DICE's defense they said that battles like D-Day and the Battle for Stalingrad have been done already and they wanted to bring something new to the table. And yes, they're absolutely right. Battlefield 1942 already did that. But guess what? That was 16 fucking years ago. And that game was loved so much by the gaming community. So how stupid can you be to not implement stuff from your extremely popular 2002 title with your amazing modern day graphic? I think that's just simply a huge missed opportunity. But no, instead DICE wanted to focus on something that hasn't been done yet. In such a level that it hasn't even been done yet by World War II itself. Like, excuse me, what the fuck? Dice, what's the point of trying to make a World War 2 game if you ditch every realistic aspect of it and simply make everything up? Which makes me to probably the biggest con for most of you guys, which is how unrealistic Battlefield 5 is for a quotation marks World War 2 game. And to be honest, personally, I don't really care that much about it, since gameplay and fun always goes above historical accuracy in my opinion, but I can imagine that a lot of true World War II fanatics were heavily disappointed with Battlefield 5's level of realism and historical accuracy. For example, the fact that the Allied forces use the same weapons as the Axis forces and vice versa, or the fact that there are female soldiers in the German army. Like, fair enough, I can understand that the Allied forces could have had some female resistance soldiers, but female Nazi soldiers? Really, dice? Not to be a sexist fuck or anything, but the Nazi ideology didn't allow any females into the army to fight as soldiers, since they believed that women weren't suitable enough to fight in the military and should do things like housekeeping, cooking and single-handedly raising their quotation mark superior Aryan kids while their husbands were fighting at the front. And I know guys that sounds very rude and disrespectful and luckily we know better nowadays, but that was just how things were back in Nazi Germany in those days. So from DICE's perspective I can understand why they made this decision since it fits better in our modern day society. But if they truly wanted to go for a realistic approach they really should remove the female soldiers from at least the German army in the game. And so I can go on and on about all the unrealistic aspects of Battlefield 5, but I guess I've made my point already that realism isn't one of DICE's main priorities. Oh, by the way, you know what also isn't one of DICE's main priorities? Rushing last minute development and releasing a full game on time. Which brings me to the next con, which is the fact that Battlefield 5 kind of feels like a rushed game in my opinion. And yeah, I know I'm not the only one who can clearly see that DICE was under a lot of time pressure when having to quotation marks polish the game right before initial release because of their good old pal Patrick Zodaland making sure that Battlefield 5's pre-orders were even more depressing than the game's historical accuracy, which resulted in Battlefield 5's delayed release date and the fact that DICE had to implement something as simple as a fucking shooting range as DLC content, probably because they didn't have time to finish it before release date because of all the polishing they had to do. This also resulted in the game still being riddled with glitches and bugs that shouldn't be in a fully released game. Game. Especially if you're paying at least <coughs> forty dollars for it. And fair enough, those bugs and glitches don't make the game unplayable, but they're still very annoying from time to time. But to be honest, I don't think this con will last for long since DICE will probably patch everything in the next upcoming months. But for now, the answer you're probably all here for. All in all, I think Battlefield 5 is a great game with a lot of potential that just suffered heavily from last minute time pressure and especially from bad reputation and marketing. And not to forget absolutely retarded chief directors that were too busy comparing Battlefield 5 with Fortnite and trying to get their entire community to hate your guts instead of doing actually something with the feedback they got from their own players. So if you have the ability to forgive and forget what the bullies at EA and DICE insulted us for, then yes, you should definitely buy Battlefield 5 since as I already said it's just overall a great game in my opinion. But on the other side, if DICE and EA's insults still bugs you and you simply want to make a statement, then I can highly understand and then I will also tell you to definitely not buy it simply as a wake-up call for DICE and EA. 
But for me personally, I tend to look only at the game itself and not so much at the controversy surrounding it. So that's why I personally will continue to enjoy my time in Battlefield 5. So guys, that was all for this review. So if you enjoyed the video or have 10 fingers, then make sure to smash that like and subscribe button. If not, then you should probably go ahead and see a doctor. But anyways, as always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day and I'll catch you guys later. Jack it up.